I'll call the regular meeting of City Council uh, for Monday, October 4th, 2021 to order. And uh, our f we have Councillor uh, Parzo joining us uh, via technology. And um, so we'd like to welcome everyone. And our first delegation this morning, uh, 2.1, we have Edward Stanford and Kelsey and Jaron from Urban Systems are joining us this morning and they're going to give us an update on a presentation on the Rotary Park redevelopment uh, engagement process and uh, we started this I think a bit ago and uh, so we're really excited about uh, beginning the process of moving forward uh, for that recreation and park for our community and thank you guys for being here this morning and thank you for the work and the floor is yours and uh, I'm gonna, tr if you just push the mic uh, on there it will Live you there and and you're away. Thank you. Good morning. Great. Thank you, Your Worship. Uh, it really is a pleasure to be here. The last time I was here was the 22nd of March. Uh, just as a reminder, the uh, to do that was the really the the kickoff to this project regarding uh, uh, Rotary Park. Um, we are going to very quickly run over the engagement process and uh, the stakeholders that were involved in the process. Um, but first, I'd really like to thank uh, the GM of Community Services. She joined us uh, right at the beginning of the process, wasn't involved in the lead up, uh, was fantastic at uh, pulling together the stakeholders for us and uh, they truly were an incredible group. The other group I'd like to thank are the regional district who were, um, uh, they really gave us a, a bigger perspective of who is using the site at the moment and uh, they really came with a voice mm -hmm that uh, talk to the, uh, the rural residents and how much they really appreciate this park. So we're going to, uh, do we have a clicker or anything? Cool. We're not in, ah, oh, thank you. <laughs> uh, so we're, uh, you all know the site really well, but uh, the, the dashed blue line is the, the extents that we were looking at. Uh, but we weren't looking at it in isolation. Uh, the concepts uh, addressed the line uh, around with the blue dash, but we were very much looking at how are folks accessing this site, uh, what is the adjacent programming, whether it's the golf course, the highways, uh, the RV park, the Walter Wright Pioneer Village, and trails to the site, those sorts of things. So uh, it wasn't a site in isolation. Uh, next one, please. Just as a reminder, uh, the 2616, the flood, uh, this is what the site can look like. And when we think about investment on the site, then um, it, uh, there are impacts on this site. And uh, the, so something to consider going forward uh, what sort of uh, site uh, improvements are needed, but uh, what, uh, what challenges are, come with that. So Kelsey's going to run through quickly the, uh, the guiding principles that we developed uh, for the site, remembering that uh, the key stakeholders, uh, there will be changes over time. We wanted to have some principles that would be enduring for the whole site, and then uh, Jaron's going to talk about some of those concepts. Yep. Great. Yeah, so before I get into the guiding principles, I just kind of want to walk through um, what our engagement looked like. Um, so early June, we met with stakeholders, um, kind of in a group workshop um, over Zoom, and we sort of got the introductions out of the way and gave the group um, the background of the site, and there we developed the guiding principles um, as a group. And moving forward over the course of mid-June to, to mid-July, we did um, individual group workshops um, with community representatives. And from there, we just got a more specific um, understanding of their needs um, from each community group regarding the park and, and sort of what challenges exist in parks today. Um, and then in our last workshop, we really presented um, the three preferred concept or the three concept maps to uh, community groups and stakeholders. and. 
Um, it was a really great process that we held um, virtually, and um, I'll get into sort of the details of how we utilize different um, engagement pieces, but um, that's sort of the overview. Um, next slide. So um, with our stakeholders, we understood that there are some limitations with Zoom. Um, luckily, everybody was comfortable using, oh, you can go back one if that's okay. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, so um, everyone was comfortable using Zoom, but we also really wanted to utilize another tool. And so we used here on the left um, a program called Mural. It allowed stakeholders to simply click a link and um, have sort of a real-time engagement using these sticky notes virtually where they could um, share their input uh, by typing and everybody was able to view um, answers and we were able to elaborate more and get more feedback from people. So it was a good tool to use and um, we got a lot of feedback from everybody and, and with this tool we were able to form our guiding principles. And so on the next slide we sort of outline the three main objectives. The guiding principle is really made up of the park being connected, sustainable and inclusive. Um, so with Connected, we really um, heard from stakeholders that uh, the, the site is really a gateway park. It's really the first impression of Dawson Creek and we heard from stakeholders that people really come around um, from all over the north to visit, um, to stay the weekend and, and um, would spend the whole yeah, weekend with family. Um, we, we heard that the site is um, to be sustainable, whether that's through environmentally, economically or operationally sustainable and um, an inclusive park, a park that is a space for all, regardless of age, background, um, and ability, so that all can enjoy. And so, as a result of those workshops and the guiding principles, we prepared three concept options for the park based on the feedback from the different stakeholders. Um, they were quite different concepts, um, varying on the capital costs to start them up, operational costs, and went from option one, which was a really naturalized space, uh, to option three, which had a lot of built up amenities, lots of different activities going on, um, and would require differing levels of staff and volunteers to maintain. Um, we, after these options were prepared, we had another workshop with all of the stakeholders um, where they determined which elements they liked the most and elements take, were taken from each concept option to form this preferred concept plan that you'll see on the screen now. So this plan contains a mix of spaces that were determined to be priorities by the stakeholders and we will go into more detail on the following slides into each of those different amenities um, as well as the conversations that led to the inclusion of those amenities in the concept. Uh, so next slide please. So this first area uh, is what we have been calling the cultural area and family camping area. So the idea here was to provide a mix of um, an alternative style of camping to the RV park uh, with tent platforms. You can see a few precedent images on the screen there. Um, whether that be for families who aren't able to travel out of town but still want that tenting experience um, or just to provide a different sort of space. The existing BMX track that is currently in this area was determined to be an important amenity, but stakeholders didn't feel that this park was necessarily the best location for it. So this concept reimagines that area as a cultural and interpretation and educational area with a native plant medicine walk and other amenities. So this space is trying to be reflective of that connected and inclusive guiding principles. So including information about the different cultures that make up the community of Dawson Creek, as well as providing a connection to history and the present and different educational opportunities. Uh, next slide, please. In this area, we are proposing a ropes course as well as some dedicated food truck parking. Uh, ropes course was something that was brought up multiple times by the stakeholders as something that people would like to see and 
the idea here is to include something that would have amenities for children of different ages as well as uh, a path around the perimeter for caregivers or other people who aren't necessarily wanting to play on the ropes course but still want to be involved. As well, and then the food truck parking area is intended to provide food and water or drinks uh, for park users to let people stay longer, as well as some picnic and seating areas there. Um, one of the things that we heard from stakeholders that was really important was having multi-use spaces for people of all ages. Um, and so that's why we really wanted to try and cluster complementary activities throughout the site. Next side, slide, please. Great, and building off of the guiding principles, accessibility was a huge piece um, to sort of envisioning this site in the future. And um, with that, we heard from stakeholders that a paved multi-use trail would be um, best suited um, to allow for people of all abilities to access the park. Um, new um, inclusive play equipment that we heard um, seating and shade sort of available throughout the park. Um, as you can see in those precedent images, the bottom right is sort of a shade sail that was proposed and um, it's a neat idea as it can be removed in the winter and um, can help with the uh, maintenance long term. Um, and then um, a big portion was connecting the park through accessible bridges um, uh, across the creek there and an accessible washroom and changing facility that is large enough for people of all different ages to um, be able to spend the day there and, and have those facilities um, to accommodate. Next slide, please. Uh, this is just a closer view of Again, kind of a multi-use space that would include um, existing play equipment as well as some new play equipment, a seating area where parents or caregivers are able to observe children, but children still have enough room uh, to be free and independent. Um, this concept proposes the eventual transition of the existing spray park into a misting pad that would have lower water requirements. And the reason this was included on the plan is because stakeholders indicated that the current uh, splash park requires a staff member on site at all times that it's in operation um, and is not necessarily sustainable in the long run in terms of the number of hours and the amount of upkeep that is required. Uh, this space also includes, like Kelsey just mentioned, an accessible change room and washroom facility. Next slide, please. Uh, finally, on this side of the site, uh, over by the, on, by the John Hart Highway, um, we have some grass volleyball courts. Uh, these were proposed by the stakeholders instead of sand volleyball courts due to their lower maintenance requirements as well as that flood risk that we saw in the beginning, um, thinking that that would be easier uh, if the park were to flood. Uh, to get those fields back operational. And down in the left-hand corner um, on the plan and then in the bottom right-hand corner in the image, um, stakeholders noted that in the future they would like to see a signalized crossing at the existing highway crossing to improve pedestrian and bicycle safety. And then next slide, one more please. So due to the large number of works proposed in the concept, we broke out the updates into different phases. This is only a proposed phasing plan and like the concept itself, uh, can change and be adjusted as time goes on. Nothing that was shown here is set in stone, but we really hope that the elements shown here really reflect what stakeholders brought to the table during those workshops and that's what uh, was really aiming to be reflected in the plan. So uh, we've heard uh, from uh, Kelsey and Jaron uh, a lot about stakeholders and they truly were, this was their plan and uh, our role was really to um, set up a framework for them to uh, talk collectively but also individually and uh, I, I don't remember how many meetings we had in total, but there were a lot of me a lot more meetings than we'd originally proposed. Mm -hmm. um, thanks to your GM of community services, there were other folks came in uh, and wanted to be part of the process, uh, and we were absolutely fine with that. 
and just want to reiterate a, a huge thank you to those stakeholders because they really did open up and uh, share as much information as uh, was available. And what we're seeing quite a busy park, and uh, I think what we were seeing also was a reflection of elements that they would like to see, uh, not necessarily all at this site, but could happen somewhere in the city at some time. So uh, along with this, uh, we've produced uh, a couple of reports and budgets which um, staff are going through at the moment. So we have- Thank you. Thank you so much, you guys. Um, questions of council, anyone? Uh, Edward, one or to the ladies, one, uh, was there was there any discussion by the stakeholders or the groups at all about uh, all season uh, in terms of a multi-season park so that you incorporate amenities into the park that it could be used for 12 months out of the year? This, uh, to me, the uh, overview appears as though it's summer uh, activities primarily, and I just wondered if that was a discussion at all that entered into it in terms of incorporating other uh, uh, aspects to the park that would be used multi-season. Mm -hmm. uh, thank you, Your Worship. So that was something that came up in the initial workshops, um, was multi-season use, and at certain points there were discussions of a skating loop or cross-country ski trails. Uh, but that was one of those elements, the skating in particular, that it was brought to our attention in later workshops that things like that had been tried at this park and weren't necessarily as successful okay. as they would potentially be in another location in the city. But things like snowshoeing or other winter uses that could take place, or uh, winter walking if you have those paved trails that were cleared or something like that, those were kind of the winter activities that stakeholders indicated they would like to see at this park. Okay, good, thank you. Councillor Dover. Oh, thank you. Uh, thank you for the presentation, it was good. Uh, okay. You know, a couple things, one, I definitely like the, the community feel to it, like you can tell that you guys reached out to the right stakeholders and it definitely has a feel. I guess, like your f first slide is about the floods, like, you know, my biggest concern would be like, you know, do you invest that much in an area that's prone to flood? And I'm assuming by you guys having your first slide as the flood, you're, are you thinking that it's not the, the right area for it either? Or was that just more because uh, you planned around that? Uh, great question. And really this comes down to uh, what sort of investments could be made. So the concept one was uh, a site, as Jaron said, that was a, a more naturalized park space without um, specific programming beyond maybe walking trails and some new bridges. Uh, the flooding is uh, going to be a challenge there forever. Yeah. And, um, and I think, uh, you know, as I said, the, the elements we're seeing are elements that uh, the stakeholders, all the stakeholders would like to see Maybe not necessarily there, but maybe somewhere in the community. So this was uh, a fantastic opportunity for uh, almost community engagement as to the opportunities for all of your parks yeah. uh, to take some of those into consideration. Yeah, yeah we have a lot of parks in, in Dawson for sure yeah. that could be utilized differently. So yeah, thank you. Uh, Shante? Sorry, I've got to leave that there. Your Worship, thanks. I just wanted to make sure that we shout out to the Mile Zero Park Society. Also, they were a key part, and they're here today, too, in, in this engagement. As well, just so you guys know, too, they had youth all the way up to, to seniors that were there, as well the two electoral area D and E representatives so from good. the PRRD as well. So it was, it was a really good experience for people to be involved in the engagement. And thank you to Urban Systems, too, for your guys' work. Thank you, Shante. Councillor Jurekov. Um, I haven't seen it before, so I'm not sure. Do the blue areas, are they water features Hello. necessarily, or is it just the only Hello. water feature, the existing uh, site that they've got there? Uh, could we just jump back to that slide, please? It's a playground and misting pad site. Yeah. The ropes course and food one right now. Do you want to address that? Yeah. All right there. Yeah. yeah, yeah, that one there. Mm -hmm. So, 
only the misting pad would have water involved. Those colors were more just um, to indicate that it would be a different surface than okay. the surrounding areas. Okay, I think that's, uh, that's an important factor. One of the issues that I see there is that, you know, you can invest a lot of money in water features and there's very limited number of days that you can actually use them. <clears throat> you know, if you've got a pool down in the Kootenays, you can use it most days. But up here, it's pretty limited, and I, I don't know if we've got a record of, you know, how many usable days there are, but um, in my estimation, just anecdotally, I would say, you know, you've got maybe 20 to 30 days. Eh? So how much investment do you want to make in a water feature for that amount of time? The other thing is the water features are the most susceptible to damage with the flooding. And the flooding we get from, the, from Dawson Creek, but we also get the heavy rains that come off the hill that, you know, wash into that area. And uh, so I think the, the features that you're planning there are uh, pretty forgiving, you know, for, for flood situations. So um, I don't know. I, it, we have to use some areas that are, are flood flood zones. Otherwise, we're pretty limited to what we've got here. <laughs> so I, I think it's a you know reasonable plan. Thank you, Councillor Parslow. Yes, thank you. Well, I'm pleased to see the um, the how the BMX part has been uh, used because. Uh, as I probably the presenters know, obtaining insurance for a BMX part is proving to be almost impossible unless you put it behind a very high fence and you have on-site supervision whenever it's used. So I think naturalizing that area is a feature I, I like. But I, I'm a little puzzled about operationally you know, I saw the uh, tents there on platforms. Um, uh, how does one supervise, how does, it, does one operationalize such a, uh, a setup so that it's not just occupied by whatever? Um, any comments about how that's been operationalized elsewhere? Yeah, so two interesting questions there. The, the BMX track, um, in uh, the way that is evolving across a number of communities is you're absolutely right. The insurance requirements are, are very high when you have uh, programming like that. And we are seeing uh, in other communities that those BMX tracks are becoming uh, privatized and um, and they're being run that way. With regard to the uh, the cultural site and the the tenting, uh, again, there's an opportunity. What we ho heard quite clearly from stakeholders was that there is an interest for other groups to uh, partner with the Mile Zero Society uh, if there are specific areas where they could have. A, a footprint within this park, this community park, and maybe take on an element uh, of it. So whether it was uh, running uh, that part of it, that could be an opportunity going forward. Thank you, Edward. You know, I uh, th thank you. Um, when I looked at that slide and two things come to mind. We provide all these quality of life amenities for uh, arenas and pools and curling rinks and stuff, but to me that idea, that concept of that cultural camp, does it give us an opportunity to provide for those, there's the segment of your population that don't have the ability to buy a holiday trailer and don't have the ability to hook on and go to Moonshine Lake. And so does this, does that create the opportunity for us to give somebody locally to be able to take their children camping in a, in a, in a environment?
environment that's uh, provided and very, very reasonable and modest, and you find a way to make it work. And I really like the idea of that. And maybe you partner with other groups, like the Boy Scouts or something, turn it into a Boy Scouts camp, and they manage it and they look after it and then provide that amenity to our community. I really like the rope course and all of those things as well. And uh, as you guys have identified at the first slide, and it's been talked about location, location, location is everything. And, and uh, yeah, that's the location that we deal with in terms of uh, that flooding potential. But I really like some of that concepts to it and and uh, really appreciate the input from obviously the groups and the stakeholders who have provided that help and support. Anything further from Council? Anybody? Yeah, uh, may I, can I speak? Yes, go ahead, Councillor Parslow. Um, I notice that phase one uh, is the removal under the heading has re removals and restoration. So I'm assuming the removal is the removal of the existing uh, former lake, let's call it that. Uh, is there a hint so you can give me as to cost of doing that removal, Edward? So uh, we have um, produced some costs uh, for administration, and they are based on 2021 uh, uh, construction uh, estimates that uh, were used for removal of an existing um, outdoor hockey rink. So those are the, the pricing comparisons for an asphalt pad there and boards. So yes, we've provided all that for administration for consideration for their 2022 budget to bring forward to Council. Thank you. Thank you. Blair? Through your worship to Councillor Parslow and everyone. So uh, during our budget discussions, that number will be brought forward. I know that Shantae is working on it within her capital uh, deliberations right now. As this is a, a phased approach, we do know the one thing that the lake has to be removed um, and put back to bed. So that will be in the very near future at our next budget discussion, uh, part of that discussion. Thank you. Anything further from Council? Yes, this will be my last, if you allow me to ask you one more, more question. More. <laughs> <laughs> um, again, to Edward, um, you know, I definitely applaud the uh, concept of the misting pad. Um, I didn't, I don't understand from where I'm at right now, uh, the, the, uh, what the disposition is concerning the recommendation about the existing water park. Do you see the two operating hand in hand, uh, some synergy between them, or do you see one being removed so that the misting park can um, be the aquatic attraction? So recognizing that uh, the existing spray park is a, is a recent uh, investment that's been made on the site, and uh, respecting that, and it has a a life, but also uh, over time, uh, a, a misting uh, pad and toys could be introduced to be incorporated around it. Uh, as Jaron mentioned, the some of the challenges we heard were the just the the volume of volunteer hours to operate that existing site. Uh, mm -hmm beyond maintenance, just the, the running of it. And uh, we would like to propose a system that could move away from those huge requirement of volunteer hours uh, to be running pumps and things like that and uh, rely on uh, that more for, from a maintenance perspective than uh, an operating continually. So it would be uh, very much a sort of phased approach. Uh, there would be no proposal to remove the existing spray toys immediately. Yeah, I think the the investment's been made, and the community should get the best out of it that they can. Thank you, Councillor Dover. Thank you, Worship. Is this getting brought back under Mayor's business? Or? Uh, yeah, it does. It does? Okay. Yeah. I'll, I'll save my questions for them because yeah. they're uh, staff. So. Thank you. Thank you. 
Um, so uh, thank you so much for coming this morning. Obviously the work that you guys have put into this and uh, very helpful and certainly provides council with that information. Uh, we make decisions based on the information and it's been very helpful I think to provide that to council today and, and we look forward now to having some discussions and uh, move forward. So thank you guys so much for being here this morning and for the work you've done on this on behalf of the community. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Have a great week. Uh, item, any late items? None? New councillor business. Councillor Earl. Uh, thank you, Your Worship. I just wanted to uh, make note of the fact that I attended the Dawson Creek Co-op's 100th annual or 100th annual general meeting last week okay. and uh, congratulate the board and staff and, and their members on another successful year and, and thank them for the 100 years they've been here and look forward to the next 100. Thank you for doing that. Any other new councillor business? Uh, item five uh, is our minutes, 5.1. We have the minutes of our regular meeting of council for September 20th for adoption. Move, councillor Kemp, second. Councillor Dvekoff, all those in favor? Opposed, that's carried, thank you. Any business arising out of the minutes for anyone? Correspondence, 7.1. We have a letter from Kelly Kenny, the corporate officer of the uh, city of Lang Langley in regards to appointment of directors to their region to regional district boards. Councillor Jubekov. Sorry. I'll get it here. There you go. So is this not already done? Well, so you have, the, our board, our council has the ability to appoint who they want to be our representative at the Peace River Regional District, representing the city at that uh, table, as well as the alternate. And what the city of Lang Lee is uh, requesting is that it be the mayor as being the automatic appointee. And uh, I think we have a function by democracy that says we appoint who we feel will re best represent our community. And to me, that's the uh, direction our council has taken in the past. Well, I'll make a motion that we uh, comply with the request. Um, okay, uh, second. <laughs> Do you have a second there for a second time? And for a third time to have a seconder. The, um, thank you, the, uh, uh, just uh, for me, the, we do and have, I think, always appointed the mayor as the designate, but that doesn't necessarily have to be the case, I think, Councillor, is the, is the point, and what um, Langley or, and so council could say, look, we don't want the mayor to sit there, we want a councillor to be our designate, and, and, um, and that's a process of, I think, appointee to that board. And I think what Langley are saying is they feel it should be the mayors appointed to the direct, as their directors across the province. So um, I think our system works completely appropriate the way it is now with council making that decision. Councilor Earl? Uh, I agree, and to that effect, I would uh, move, I don't know whether it's more appropriate to receive for information or, or make a motion that we decline the request to support this motion. If we're not interested, we're, we just receive for information. Okay, receive for information, thank Second. you. Second, Councillor Dvekov. Discussion, so all those in favor? Sorry, opposed, carried, thank you. Uh, 7.2, we have a letter from the Regional District of Mount Waddington regarding a donation letter to Lytton. Councillor uh, Earl, did you want to speak? No, no, oh. I'm good. Councillor Dvekov. <laughs> Move for information. Thank you. Second? Councillor Earl. All those in favor? Opposed? That's carried. Uh, item 8, reports. Uh, we have 8.1. We have report number 21133 from the corporate officer regarding the Dawson Creek Visitor Guide. Well, I don't... Councillor uh, Parslow. I'd like to move the report number 21-133 from the corporate officer of Dawson Creek Business Drive be received. Further Spectra Venue Management be instructed to prepare the next publication 
with a reduced scope, with more static information, and the future publications be coordinated with the municipal election every four years, with the next issue to be budgeted in 2022 and published in early 2023. Thank you. Do I have a seconder? Councillor Kemp. Discussion? May I speak to yes, the go motion? Yes, Councillor uh, Parslow. I, I changed it because it seemed the way it was presented it was open-ended. It, it was uh, Spectra Energy, uh, Spectra, Spectra Venue Management would be doing it ad nauseum. Um, so I just changed it to be the next publication because who knows what our arrangements would be with them, let's say in 2030. For you sure. know what I mean? So, so that's my reasoning. Thank you. Good catch. Councillor uh, Dober. Thank you, Worship. Um, I got a few things around this. I, I mean, tourism to me, I one I feel is a huge part of our community that's that doesn't get the the love or attention that it needs. Um, you know, I, I think there needs to be a bigger overview, or like it's part of our strategic plan. Tourism. I've been in here for a year. We haven't even talked about it once. Um, but to me, there's a bigger picture to this, and I don't agree with doing this every four years either. I think um, you look at the business community, you know, the local shops downtown that invest in our community. Um, this tool is powerful for them to give to people that are coming to town, whether it's from, you know, our local areas or from out of town. Like, to do it every four years for one doesn't make sense to me because, you know, we got these... You know, a hotel that's investing, what, $10 million in our community, they're not going to get the opportunity to be in there for four years. We got these businesses downtown that open, you know, frequently or doing things like, um, I, I think there's a bigger picture to our tourism. I think, um, you know, this pandemic has put a lot of things, you know, on hold, um, and it looks like it might go into next year. So, you know, I feel now is the time when we can't focus on tourism that we should be. We should be thinking about what we're doing, what we're gonna do coming out of the gates. Um, I really believe there's a bigger picture to it. I think, you know, with all due respect to the people at Spectra, um, you know, you know, they got two hats. One is running an event center, the other is tourism. Like, it doesn't make sense to me, like, how we're gonna get, um, 110 percent out of them for tourism when they got another hat on like when they got another focus and you know i, I know there's another year contract left in there but I, I think there's a way bigger picture to this and a focus and um i'm only one voice and i get that so if the focus is to put tourism on the back burner and not have it as a focus of the community i i guess so be it but um you know i think there's i think we're missing some stuff here and uh to make a decision on this that's could be four years it just it doesn't make sense to me and you know maybe there's new um new ways to get tourism stuff out maybe it's not even doing magazines maybe it's social media or you know there's other things i think there's a way bigger picture to you know having a, a, a goal and you know a, a strategic plan of where we're going with tourism instead of it, it feels like there's not much of one that you know, we did some budget cuts, we gave it to them because it made sense and it was easy. But I, I don't know, like, I, I really believe that there's a, we're missing something here and that there's a bigger picture. And, and, and mind you, I've only been in this position for a year, so maybe I missed a bunch of stuff prior to this. Um, but I still feel that, uh, you know, over the last seven or eight years in our community, that tourism, you know, hasn't been as big of a focus as it used to be. Um, and, and I really believe when it used to be a focus that there was some gain to our community, our businesses, people that live here, um, the passion, the, the whole community spirit. Um, you know, I live it and I, we all do, but I'm in the middle of it and um, it, it's not what it used to be. And, you know, I just really believe there's a bigger, a bigger overview to this and a bigger picture we should look at before we're making decisions on a, you know, on a magazine. I mean, that's a small part of it, so. Thank you. Thank okay. you for that. Councillor Javetkov. So, on, uh, on the topic of tourism in general, 
We've spent millions of dollars here in the last 20 years on tourism, and I don't think it's uh, it's resulted in any substantial benefit to the taxpayer in general here. Um, so I think that you know there's been some discussions that way, uh, but back to the to the brochure. Um, is there is it a possibility or is there a benefit to com combining economic development or some aspects of economic development with a tourism magazine? Uh, you know, we've been doing two of them, and I don't know if we're still continuing on with the economic development part of it. But um, to me, if you're taking the time and effort to do a good magazine, uh, it makes sense to combine the two. Um, anyways, it's, it's a question more than anything. Brenda? Yes, through your worship. Um, the, the Dawson Creek magazine that is uh, based, it's focused more on the tourism, um, the highway traffic, um, and so to include all the information that you would have for investors, um, it just didn't didn't seem appropriate, so we pulled all that information, and that's included in the community profile, which the mayor uses for economic development purposes, and it's available on the website as well. Um, it's just serving two different groups. Go ahead, Councillor uh, Jimakoff. You can answer that. Yeah. So I guess the only other comment I have on a on a magazine for tourism, like we attract a number of people or we target a number of people that are traveling north on the Alaska Highway. I think our, our biggest uh, benefit is if we target the closer in tourists, the ones from Grand Prairie, Fort St. John, Fort Nelson, uh, Tumblr, those are the ones that actually come into town and spend some time and spend some money on a regular basis. It's not just a one-time, you know, travel the highway to go to Alaska. It's uh, basically weekly. And I think those uh, communities need to be targeted a lot more heavily than, you know, the travelers from the states. Thank you. Uh, thank you. Councillor uh, Dober and then Councillor Lex, or sorry, Blair. <laughs> Go ahead, Terry. Well, I got before you. <laughs> um, I guess, like, one is, is, do we need to do a magazine next year? Like, we don't really know where this pandemic's going. Like, um, you know, there's talk about it going into next summer and restrictions, and it seems like the restrictions are coming back heavily, you know, heavy and almost more heavy than they were before. So does it make sense to to not even, you know, to save this money for next year um, and look at, you know, I think I think we need to revisit tourism. I, you know, I respect Councillor Javetkov's comments, but one is, is like, we've invested millions of dollars in tourism and we haven't got anything back. Like, I don't even know if there's facts on that because I, I know what we get back. Like, if, you know, we're... It's about getting people to come to Dawson and it's a great community and staying for an extra day like whether it's the American tourists or it's people from our areas um, You know, it's about keeping them in our community and about showing them what there is here That's what benefits our taxpayers the, the longer people stay the more everybody makes which benefits the whole community. So um, You know, I think some of those comments I, I'd like to, I don't think there's much information on backing them up. So um, but anyways, I, I don't know, like, I, it doesn't make sense for me to to vote in favor of doing a magazine next year if we don't have clear direction where we're going, just to waste $30,000 or whatever it is. So. Thank you. Blair? Just a couple of things, Your Worship, um, for Councillor Dover. So this was a decision made by Mayor and Council, I'm going to say two years ago. Uh, Spectra Energy doesn't or Spectra Energy, here I go. <laughs> Spectra, um, this is a separate contract to the operation of the uh, Oventov Center. So they operate it separately, they have separate employees. So just to be, for the public, they don't operate it as a secondary 
uh, to the event of the event center. This is a separate contract with individuals hired to deliver tourism on behalf of the city. That is a contract the mayor and council have voted on and entered into. It is due up. They have one more year, 2022. Uh, so during this year coming up, there will be an RFP, I imagine, put out uh, pending council's vote on that to look for a tourism provider. It may be uh, the same one who bids. It may be new people coming into it. Um, so I want to make sure we are aware of that. This is not just a, a secondary job of the Event of Events Centre. This is a tourism contract of which they have delivered for us. Um, we did make changes a year ago, um, probably a little more than a year ago. Mayor and Council opted to close the Alaska Highway House uh, in its present location. It has been moved out to the Mile Zero uh, Park and is being delivered there. So just that really more for information. The other thing is when you budget for next year, although the budgeting comes in next year, the magazine is not until 2023 under this motion because we share that. We think there's concerns for next year um, that will the traveling public be back? Will we be seeing the tourist uptake? So do you publish a magazine for 2022? Um, the recommendation says no, let's budget for it, develop it and put it in for 2023 which would see about a four year turnaround from the original one that's out there right now. So just some information. Uh, Thank you. Mayor, may I make a comment? Uh, yes, I'm just going to go to Councillor Earl and then I'll uh, yes, get to you Councillor Parsons. Go ahead Councillor Earl. Uh, thank you Your Worship. Uh, so I'm, I'm um, Tentatively okay with the motion. Uh, I do share concerns with Councillor Dober that, or you know, his observation that our our tourism program has kind of become uh, rudderless over the last couple of years. I think a lot of that has to do with the pandemic. I think um, a lot of folks at Spectra came into it with really good intentions, and then obviously to have so much scuttled and and have to sit on the back burner for so long as. The pandemic became kind of the paramount concern is, I think, uh, the result of that. But I, I do agree um, with with Councilor Dover's take that, that tourism is a worthwhile thing to pursue. I know our neighboring community, Tumblr Ridge, is investing heavily in it and looking at niche tourism. You know, that's one thing to bear in mind in a world of seven and a half billion people. Um, you know, you don't need to, to capture a big slice of that pie um, for a community of their size or our size in order to see some significant benefits. So, uh, I, and I think this is a much bigger conversation than the magazine. I think it's worth exploring over time. I know we've got some conversations we're going to be having with our uh, local stakeholders around how we fund that. But I also, um, you know, I always point to, uh, I lived a year in Whitehorse in my first year of college and that's at the other end of the Alaska Highway. Similar constraints geographically, um, a lot of the same kind of challenges, remoteness, um, some very similar historical aspects um, around frontier and, and indigenous history and things like that. And I look at the extent to which they've been able to capitalize on that to the point where fully a third of the town is employed in the hospitality sector. And it is treated as a career in an industry equal to that of other industries. And that's that's one thing um, I, I feel like we are kind of uh, foregoing or missing here. So uh, I, I think this is a bigger conversation than the magazine, but I do agree that uh, holding off for a year to see where we land with the pandemic is probably the most prudent course with respect to constraining costs. Thank you. Councillor uh, Parswell? Yes, I don't wish to debate my colleagues at this time about this, um, comparing Whitehorse to Dawson Creek. I've been to both, obviously, to Dawson many countless years, but Whitehorse uh, and so on. But um, I do think there's a lot of data that uh, Councillor Dober would be probably find very interesting, and uh, then he can make his own decisions based upon that data, um, comparing our visitors' numbers to the 1980s before tourism Dawson Creek really began. But I think the magazine is a, is a, it does depict our community in its proper light um, and is a good souvenir. It's distributed throughout North America. 
It, uh, and I think it has a useful function. So that's why I'm supporting the, the motion. Thank you, Councillor <laughs> Dover. My last question. Thank you, Worship. You're welcome. Um, so just so I'm clear, like, to, I guess to Blair, so the, we're, this is tentatively approving funds for the 2023 magazine? Yes, so we would begin the work, or tourism, uh, would begin the work in 2022 if we were to have one put together and able to be published for the 2023 season. At a reduced scope. That's what this motion speaks to, yes. I just don't, like, I, I still don't think it's worth spending that much money on something we don't have any clear direction on what we're doing. So we're just going to spend thirty or $23,000 on a magazine that is just kind of reduced scope of our already current one. Like, I, I'm that's really what the motion says. It's certainly up to mayor and council how much money they would like to spend, uh, what type of uh, magazine you would like. We can accommodate, or certainly our tourism contractor will reach out, can accommodate whatever the wish of mayor and council is. If we want to expand this, it could be expanded if that was the motion. Uh, it comes with a cost. That's Okay, and then one last thing. Back in the day when we, like we were part of starting this magazine, um, was there Im uh, financial input from the city or was it self-sufficient? Like was it, because there was a lot of ads that were sold. I don't think we put money into it, did we? I would have to look for uh, yep. historical view. Brenda? Through your worship, when the Chamber of Commerce uh, used to publish the magazine for the city and uh, they were provided with 31000 annually. Oh, really? Okay. And they had trouble meeting, like making a profit of it. Did they? At that okay. point. Mm -hmm. I, I still don't know if it's worth, like I, I don't get like everything that we got going on and we're trying to cut all this cost everywhere else and we're doing all these other things. Like it doesn't make sense to me why we would spend 23000 on this and have no clear direction where it's going besides a reduced scope. So. Thank you. Councillor Jebekka. Uh, just one last question. Is there a... Are we going to try and update all the photos? Like that last magazine we had, there were some photos in there that were old. We, um, so uh, honestly, we, um, at every opportunity for me when we do the magazines, I go through them um, with uh, the uh, for the, on the one with New Harvest and uh, the others, I always go through trying to update with current and more pertinent and relevant photographs as best that I can in terms of doing that. But I, I agree. I think there's some in there, and it's just making sure you get a new inventory and new perspectives. And uh, I think two years ago, we got up in the plane with Sabrina's husband to try to get a good picture of the ski hill. and the. So just always trying to look for ways to get it as current as possible. So we absolutely do that, yeah. Did you, sorry, did you want to speak further to that, Paul? Yeah, so I'll provide a picture of the ski. Awesome. <laughs> but, you know, I think, especially if we're only going to do it every four years, I think we should have all new photos. Yeah. You know, I think it's worth it to, to keep it current, yeah. um, especially if you're doing it four years. I mean, you could have people's pictures in there that are deceased if you're not careful. Sure. Thank you. Councillor Dober? Ryan, sorry. <laughs> just to Councillor Dvekov, I just have a question. If we, if we think it's best to do it every four years, how do you think that's fair for the 10 businesses that open in our community in tourism in four years? How do you think that that is fair for their investment they're giving to our city, that we're not giving them an opportunity to be fresh every year? Just curious. Well, are they? Are you? Do you have businesses in there? You mean to buy ads in there? Yeah, there's ads out throughout the whole magazine of businesses and local coffee shops and boutiques and oil field companies. There's a, a bit of everything in it. Yeah, I mean that's that's a good point. I mean I don't know if you can do a magazine based on on the ads, then that would be the way to do it. We would save thirty thousand bucks. Um, maybe there's a, a way to do that. But there's nothing stopping the chamber, who represent the businesses in Dawson, uh, of doing the same thing. They can do a, you know, their own magazine. But anyways, I don't know uh, 
Like to me, I'm just looking at the city's cost. And I, you know, I don't know if the city should be subsidizing the businesses to do advertising. I don't know. Blair? Your Worship, maybe just a, as a point, um, we can deliver as a city a magazine every year, every second year, every four years, whatever the wish of council is, it really is going to come down to a decision. Um, how much money do you want to invest in the magazine and how long will it run for? We can accommodate any of that. Um, we traditionally have done one, one every year. Um, there is an opportunity to look, as I understand it, the discussions I have had on this subject is we don't have businesses banging down the door to advertise in this magazine. It has been a challenge. Um, so that is why there's always um, certainly better than $20,000. I know the NDIT has been involved in this previously. Um, now, should they be involved in it again, then that would take money away from the grant we get uh, that goes elsewhere within the city right now under economic development. So, but to be clear, we can, this motion speaks to every four years, but uh, it can be delivered at the wish of council in whatever term they want, just knowing that it does come with a cost. Thank you. So uh, for me, uh, two things. Uh, we are going to be reviewing, uh, I think, the contract for tourism uh, next year. And um, we, when Northern BC Tourism uh, left and we were in a position that we had to get somebody to operate our tourism spectra at the time, Ryan uh, stepped in and said he would provide that services to us and they hired somebody to uh, look after the tourism uh, bit for us. I think to me, I, I wanna emphasize, we have benefited hugely in our community by tourism. We have new hotels, we have probably more hotels per population per capita hotel rooms than any other community uh, in that I can think of and restaurant seats uh, per capita we're up at the top and uh, our event sport tourism strategy when we have uh, changed that rudder a little bit in terms of uh, tourism because we've invested heavily in that event sport tourism model that has had paid huge benefits to our community over the last four or five years with the hockey and uh, doing that all of that uh, understanding of the uh, strategic uh, employment or the steam analysis that was done uh, on it. So we have had huge benefits to it. We're working away at the regional district in terms of looking at a, a different model for uh, hopefully uh, tourism as a component of economic development. So there's lots of stuff going on and I think we've had a huge benefit to that. And to me, the aspect that the first thing to Councillor Dober's point is getting that council to have that direction next year as that tourism contract expires and how and what is it that we want to uh, move forward with in a direction strategically for tourism and how do we invest in it. So uh, I'm in favor of redoing, I'm, I don't want to do the uh, magazine next year. I don't want to invest money this year into it because next year we don't know where we're going to be. And so two things that are going to happen next year. Uh, we'll start the preparation for the uh, the uh, magazine for 2023, and we will have that discussion at council on the direction for our uh, tourism contract and what does that look like for the future of our community and on behalf of our community. So I support it today because I know those two things are happening. And with that, I'm calling the question. All those in favor? Opposed? That's carried. Councillor Dober opposed. Councillor Parslow? Uh, I made the motion, so I'm going to stick with it. Thank you. I appreciate <laughs> it. Uh, motion uh, carries. Thank you. Good discussion, you guys. Uh, 8.2, we have report number 21137 from the General Manager of Development Services regarding the engineering and permit fees for the Dawson Creek and uh, Exhibition Association. I'm prepared to make the motion if nobody else wants to. Thank you. Go ahead. I move the report number 21-137 from the General Manager of Development Services, Reengineering and Permit Fees for Dawson Creek Exhibition Association be received. Further, the council directs staff to budget at 130000 in the 2022 financial plan to cover the costs of engineering and permitting for the Dawson Creek Exhibition Association projects identified as the cow barn, the 4-H building, and horse barn. Further, the staff work with the Dawson Creek Exhibition Association to develop a five-year capital plan for 2023 to 2027 to be presented to council prior to September 
2022. Thank you. Do I have a seconder? Councillor Dober? Uh, go ahead, Councillor Parzlo, if you'd like I'd to speak I'd like to, to speak to the motion, and I do have a couple of questions related. The first thing is I'm really pleased to see the inclusion of a five-year capital plan. Um, that's a strong feature of this recommendation because that gives uh, the council ability to budget appropriately and to know the, the scope of commitment needed. Um, I'm assuming in making this motion that this 130,000 is in addition to the operating grant that we, we give. And um, whilst I swallow hard when we increase our expenditures, I know that this um, operation, if I can call it that, the, the Dawson Creek Exhibition Association and all that happens there is a core feature of the community. And I'd like to just get this thing rolling in a totally positive direction where the volunteers are energized and we have some certainty. So thank you very much. Thank you. Councillor Dober. Thank you, Worship. Uh, just like one thing. So the 130,000, if that, if um, when these projects are going, if those professional fees run over it, would that be something that the, um, the society would look after? Or is that just, uh, it could be 150? Um, through your worship, I interpret the motion as it is presented that we would budget $130,000, so they would work within that, um, okay. unless there's a different intent from mayor and council, but it would be the 130. And for Councillor Parslow, for clarification, it is above and beyond the $125,000 operational grant we provide to the Exhibition Association. Okay, so I but, thought so. Yeah. Part of that thing is, is I, you know, I think for us to spend 130000 to an organization that's building which is increasing, you know, I guess our value as a city because it'll be our asset and they're maintaining it, I would be in favor of this. Um, but is there also, I, I don't know how municipal uh, taxes work like on a, on a corporate level, but do we get some um, benefits on the back end of this for like depreciation of, of you know, an asset to our city? So presently there is no tax revenue coming in. Uh, from that. So what this would do is obviously it would be owned by the city, the buildings uh, yeah. that would be built. So, and correct me if I'm wrong, Flavia, but uh, it also not only being an asset becomes a liability because you are going to have to plan for at some point the life cycle of the building. Uh, it's under our asset management. Uh, we have to begin to look at what the life is of it, what it will cost to replace, what it will cost to tear down when that day comes. And right now the city's doing that for all of our buildings, uh, which is a very important part of uh, our financial future moving forward. So but do we get to depreciate the original investment over years, be, you know, like a business yes. would? Exactly. Yeah, so there is some tax benefit to us on that end. Well, we don't. We're not. No, we're no not a tax taxable benefit. entity oh, for not, income yeah. tax and things oh, like okay. that, Darcy. For so we depreciate them on the value of them as it relates to the overall value of our tangible capital assets, uh, and then at some point we have to uh, accrue that to either replace it or we're not going. To, we're going to demolish it. So okay. that's the tangible capital asset. Process. So there's no like that formula doesn't go into like our funding no. that we get from. No. Okay. Thank you, Councillor Jewakar. Um, so, under the financial comments, there it's got a uh, for 2022 budget estimate of up to 150 thousand towards demolition of the cow barn. What is that uh, about? So originally, the barn was scheduled to be tore down. There was some um, further work done on it, I believe a year and a half ago, that indicated that that would no longer be required and could be um, utilized. That is the one they are adding on to right now, the discussion we've had with the Exhibition Association that is about to begin. So, so that is no longer No, valid. that 2022 in there is no longer there. For the cow barn. So this uh, amount of money, <coughs> basically we're saving money from before. I don't believe that 
number is in your budget for 2021. I will check with Flavia, but I but believe it would it's be. I believe it's already been pulled out, though. So yeah, you're okay. not saving. This is so dollars. the only other comment. Um, I think this is the right way to go on on this one shot deal. I think for the five year plan, like I would like to see some consideration in reviewing their financial plan as well. Um, so when we do our five year plan, it should be a joint thing. And um, which I don't believe it was done. It wouldn't have been done for this uh, amount. A review of their financial plan to see if there's contribution uh, to this 130,000. No, this was a request at, their, at the last meeting. We did not evaluate their financials to say you can afford it, you can't afford it, we'll chip in, we won't chip in. Yeah, so the next, the, the five-year plan would include that. <coughs> Yes, they present their financials, and I believe they will be completed by the end of this year uh, at that point, of which time the city will see them. Yeah, we need, uh, yeah, I, I'm just going to add, uh, we, I, I'm in favor of it, I support it, I, I think it's uh, strong for us. We talked about tourism just a bit ago, and this is an important uh, amenity for our community and an event. Uh, for lots and lots of reasons. Um, there's volunteer organization trying to continue to build an ass assets, invest in m many hundreds of thousands of dollars and continue to build. The thing for me is we, council's got to have some understanding, I think to your point, Councillor Javekov, some understanding of what it is we're committing to in the future and we need to have that financial plan presented by the Exhibition Association to council so that the council then can budget and approve and or support or not the implications to the city in regards to the financial components of this engineering and permits and all of that cost. Councillor Javekov? Yeah, so that's a good point about uh, tourism. Like we, we spend money under the uh, heading of tourism, but we also spend a lot of money that benefits tourism that people don't consider. And this is an example. Um, you know, the Exhibition Association is a huge draw, especially to people from, you know, the close in tours, which are a couple hundred miles away, that come in here and, and stay and spend money on an ongoing basis year after year. Um, when you do a calculation, and I've done the calculation in the past and I presented it here, of the, the money that we spend, the taxpayers' money that we spend that benefits tourism is huge, but it's not it's not spent under the heading of tourism. Yeah. So it's a it's a good point. Blair, your worship, just um, for clarity for Mayor yourself and Council. So with the number of one hundred and thirty thousand dollars, that is our best estimate. We do not have the formal drawings for. Uh, the 4-H building or the horse barn. So this is the best we can do from the last council meeting to this. The Exhibition Association has not provided us with uh, detailed drawings of uh, the new facilities. We're still working with them on the cow barn or that Goodon is working on. So uh, the $130,000 is as close as we could come. Uh, by no means is that a fixed number. It may, uh, I mean, I'm going to be very optimistic, maybe less than that. I anticipate it will be more than that based on what we see with the, just the cow barn and the good on building that is being put up. So just for, uh, you may get uh, somebody from the Exhibition Association coming back saying, you know, you're $20,000 short. I just, uh, but it will not be for the lack of the work that is put in on the city side. This is a best estimate we can give you based on a drawing on a sheet of paper versus engineered drawings. Yeah, and I think that's the point to me about why it's so important for us to have the planning process in place, and I understand this year, but uh, at the same time, it's not an open checkbook here either, right? And they've got to understand that I think council is making a commitment to try to support them in the best way we can. But we need to have some certainty moving forward. And uh, to me, I understand this year is an anomaly because we are just getting into it and we haven't had the opportunity of that, but in the future we are going to. But um, I can only speak for myself that I'm happy to support them at this point, but it can't be a continue coming back to the well every month for more dough. Councillor Jarekha? So will this work be tendered? 
for their facilities? For the design and, yeah, for the, the barn and the 4-H uh, building and... We would have to, we tender what we're responsible for. We will have to get that from the Exhibition Association to see what they uh, are prepared to do. They have looked after this, but if we're funding it, that can be part of our discussion and it goes out to a full tender process. In the past, and correct me if I'm wrong, Kevin, I don't believe it has been. So uh, have they actually done the work? Because I assume that we would be doing the work where it's oh, we're no. spending the money. They have actually, they are act paying for the buildings. So the money they are asking for is the engineered, uh, engineering and permitting help. So they actually fund the building. So if it's a half million dollar building, they would, the Exhibition Association pays for that. They're asking for us to pay for the, um, I guess it would be the electrical drawings, the plumbing, the heating. Uh, your HVAC system and so on. Once those documents are put together, they come at a, a relatively high cost as part of your building package. That's what they're asking us to cover. Right now, um, we have nothing formally on the 4-H building. We have nothing formally on the horse barn that they're hoping to get up next year before the fair. And we're still working with them on the cow barn, the extension to the cow barn. So... Um, we can talk to them. I just, I am not in a position to tell you they tendered the cow barn. I know that uh, Goodon Buildings has developed it and has it ready to go. Looks like they're very close to being able to move forward. We're still waiting on some information uh, as far as some of the engineering or the geotech work. Yeah, I'm just wondering, we've got $130,000, which under fi our financial policy, we would normally tender. So... Matt, can I speak? Uh, yeah, I've got Councillor Dober, and then I'll put you next, Councillor yes. uh, Parzal. Uh, thank you, Your Worship. Um, would this make more sense just to say we will give them up to $130,000 and let them look after, like, the drawings? Or Because are they wanting Kevin to look after this? So, like, they're going to do the project, we're just going to pay for it? Yes, they would look after. We are not doing the engineered drawings. They would look after all of that. They will go to a contractor, require what they need, and then if, for instance, the cow barn, if it is $70,000 worth of uh, the engineering that goes into it, the geotech work, the permitting, and so on, that's what they're asking us to pay. They would fund the actual construction of the building outside of the permitting and engineering. I think we should just give them up to the 130000 and if they go over then you know they would do some fundraising to come up with the extra 20 because it's kind of a little loaded and open-ended for us just to say yes and then it'd be 250,000 I, I don't know like I don't think it'll be that much difference but. I do interpret the motion as a hundred and thirty thousand dollar ceiling unless okay 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 then I'll uh, zip it thank you um, any further comments Discussion? Yes. Uh, go ahead. So, I'm sorry, Councillor Parsler. Go ahead. Uh, just to the question of tendering, and this is to staff, it's my recollection that the Mile Zero Park Society, as an example, uh, has been required to get um, quotes uh, in writing. Uh, so surely that same standard would apply to the, the Dawson Creek Exhibition Association. If you would like, um, we will follow through on that. It would make sense. I'm not sure in the past how that has worked with the Exhibition Association. I want to be clear. I'm not sure if the beer gardens that were tendered, if that work was tendered, if the good on building that they have worked with uh, to get developed was a tendered process. That I just don't know. If it is the wish of council that this money be tied to a full tender, uh, certainly an amendment uh, to this motion would be in order, I think. Councillor Jarekov. <laughs> yeah, I'm just wondering about the engineering. I mean, the buildings, it's their money. They're paying for them. Uh, why would we ask them to tender it? If they want to just go out and name request a quote from somebody, that's fine. But the engineering <laughs> is a thing. You can you can tender the engineering for a building, and that's 
so that's what we're contributing. We're contributing $130,000 for engineering work. The reason that I would like to see a tender is because our tenders have been coming in lower than than the estimates. So, you know, it just makes sense uh, to me that. Yeah, the one piece to me that on that point is that we want to ensure that the engineering is done and we just don't want to give the dough to them and, and then um, perhaps uh, buildings are constructed without having that engineering and without having those permits and to me that's a part of the lease agreement we want to make sure and I want to make sure we have certainty that that work is being done. Your Worship, built into their lease agreement is that the work must be accomplished by certified tradespeople. The permitting and requirements are all required under the lease that they have entered into with the City of Dawson Creek. Um, what I'm hearing is there is a wish that if the City is funding and this motion passes, then there's an expectation that the engineering work, the electrical engineering, the plumbing, the and so on, is all put out to tender. If, am I hearing that correctly? Councillor Jureka? Well, <clears throat> I guess I'm just uh, suggesting that we follow the financial policy. You know, to me, uh, if there's a loophole that you can give the money to somebody else and, and uh, circumvent the financial policy, I guess that's, that's a loophole that we have. But I'm not suggesting that we should do anything uh, extra, but we have a financial policy. And I, to me, tendering, our experience with tendering here lately has been pretty positive. We've been getting good bids, which saves money. All right. So, okay. whatever, I'm not, I'm not making any amendments or anything. I mean, we've got a financial policy that, you know, we are bound to, to follow, so. Okay, I will interpret this discussion as we will ensure that it is formally tendered and let the Exhibition Association know. Yeah, I'm I think it's, that. yeah, the motion uh, that uh, we will um, budget 130000 in the 2022 financial plan to cover the cost of engineering and permitting. And so when they submit the bill invoice to us for that engineering and permitting, uh, we would then give the 130 grand for it. So I think it's covered in the motion. We're not paying it until that work is, to, that engineering and permitting is done, right? I understand that. I am not sure what has occurred with the cow barn to date. Again, that is not our building that we're putting up. So it may very well be that they're back with a discussion to say that was not tendered. So. Okay. Mayor, can I make a comment? Yeah, go ahead, Councillor Parslow. Um, th this is uh, this money that we are proposing to give forward to the uh, uh, Dawson Creek Exhibition Association is uh, not for actually the actual building because they're doing that, but this is all taxpayer money, and I think regardless of the object, it must fit within our financial uh, policies. Thank you. So I'm assuming our administration will um, ensure that that occurs and we'll clear, provide that clarity in terms of how and what uh, council are directing the $130,000 um, to cover off. So Most ahead. definitely. Yeah. Thank you. Further discussion? All those in favor? Opposed? That's carried, thank you. Uh, 8.3, we have report number 21135 from the tax clerk regarding our 2021 tax sale results. Councillor Dober. I'll make a motion that report number 21-135 from the tax clerk reason 2021 tax sale results be received for information. Thank you. Second, Councillor Kemp. Discussion? Oh, sorry. All those in favor? <laughs> Opposed? That's carried. Thank you. Now, I was I was disappointed we couldn't have a little conversation about this. <laughs> I'm only kidding. <laughs> <laughs> 
Um, item nine is bylaws, and we have report number 21136 from the Chief Financial Officer regarding our permissive tax exemption bylaw, number 4511. Um, so I have uh, Councillor Kemp. Um, I'll move Sorry, the Brenda, did you want to speak first? Yes, excuse me, through your worship. Um, the I believe Flavia can clarify it a little better than I, but okay. uh, we'll need an amendment before the first three readings. Okay, thank you. Flavia? So, through your worship, on page nine of the bylaw, uh, proposed bylaw 4511, there was a mistake on the lot number, the legal um, information. The lot number should be replaced to lot seven and eight for Nile Camp Friendship Center. So it's just a description that was wrong. So okay. I need to replace to be sure we have the uh, legal identification corrected. Okay. Um, so let me get my... Yeah, it should be seven and eight. Okay, so Councillor Kempf. Um, I'd like to move the recommendation, the report number 20-136 from the Chief Financial Officer regarding permissive tax exemption bylaw number 4511-2021 be received. Further, that permissive tax exemption bylaw number 4511-2021 be given first three readings and further the staff be directed to publish the notice as required under section 2271 of the community charter with the amendment on page nine. Thank you. And seconded. Councillor Dober, discussion? All those in favor? Charlie, Charlie here. Sorry, go ahead, Councillor Parzal. Um, I just want to note that uh, while I'm going to support this motion, uh, the, my, I do have real concerns, and I'm, hopefully these concerns will be addressed in February when we have this item diarized for further discussion. Thank you. Thank you. you. <laughs> Uh, further discussion? All in favor? Opposed? It's carried. Thank you. So we're going to, we're close enough to 1030. We'll take a five, seven minute uh, recess and then go back into our mayor's business and should be uh, concluding. To order. And uh, we'll move on to item 10 is mayor's business. And um, I just got a few items I want to talk about. We had attended Northern Lights College under uh, fall welcome to their new uh, students barbecue and um, so it's an opportunity to wander around and meet some of the uh, students and it's crazy to me that uh, college in terms of the international student program that exists at our college and uh, the, the kids, the students that are coming into our community from all over the world and it really is international in terms of uh, uh, Ireland and Pakistan and in East India and Jamaica and uh, the Philippines and on and on and on and how, how, how amazing it is for us as a community to see how lucky we are to see those kids coming into our community and working in our community and gaining their education. It's had a really fun afternoon and Councilor Earl I think was also there and appreciate you coming down. Um, Urban systems we have as a delegation, so I'll pass through that. Still part of the partnership agreement, socioeconomic assessment committee uh, through the province on the uh, Caribou um, Recovery uh, Partnership Agreement, and we had a meeting last week or the week before. They're working right now on the uh, backcountry snowmobile advisory stuff and really trying to identify Mr. and determine. Charlie, did you uh, get them to let Charlie, get you're on the uh, speaker. And um, and uh, so the socioeconomic assessment committee, and um, so we uh, we're continuing to deal through that, and they're trying to understand the economic impact of the Caribou um, uh, partnership agreement, and uh, so I've been uh, participating fully on that, and I think we got more meetings this week. Obviously, the Hockey Canada uh, announcement was uh, last week, I believe, and uh, so we were engaged with Hockey Canada just prior to uh, the day or so before, and um, the announcement that the Women's National Under-18 Championships was being postponed uh, for this year. 
And uh, they were had to make the decision on three different uh, events in Canada, and Dawson Creeks was one of them. So we're saddened by the announcement and disappointed and all of that. But we understand as well, and uh, we certainly look forward uh, to that uh, tournament and all of those tournaments that we have the benefit of partnering with Hockey Canada at uh, Dawson Creek and our region and look forward to the next one and we'll make it uh, the bigger and better than any of the ones we've had in the past. Um, Blair and I took a trip out to Hudson Hope. Uh, I can't remember if it was last week or the week before, honestly, but um, so we ha had the presentation from uh, uh, Greg from uh, Peace Energy uh, a few months ago and updated us on the uh, s the opportunities that solar provide and um, so I know that Hudson Hope did a major installation a few years ago um, in their community and uh, installed these large solar arrays, one at their sewage lagoons for their operating their pumps, at their district office, at the curling rink, at the public works garage, um, at the museum, and at the arena. And uh, so I've... You know, I reached out to Mayor Heiberg and asked if it would be possible that we could come and have a tour of the facilities and look at the array. Oh, and their swimming pool as well, I'm sorry. And um, just to see what, and, and then have an opportunity to talk to them about the operational impacts to them now that they've had this um, installation operating now for a year or so. Um, and it was really, really interesting to me to be able to see it. They um, took us right through all of the facilities and... The solar system, I think, at the uh, sewage lagoons are operating at 100% uh, net uh, zero payback, and um, they range anywhere from 55% to 100% payback in terms of their reducing their uh, operating costs for their traditional power um, costs. And uh, they got a bunch of grant money when they kicked this in uh, uh, to um, fruition the project, and and the system produces power year-round and uh, they feed it into the grid and they get a credit when it's producing more than they use and they get a bill at the end of the year for those uh, that aren't and it was very interesting and we got a ton of detail and so we'll bring that back and um, perhaps for some further discussion this fall as we get into budget and and we'll hand out that all of that material we got from Hudson Hope and uh, give council a bit of an update on it and engage with Peace Energy again. Blair, do you have any comments on that? Your Worship, no. I thought the tour was uh, very much an eye-opener for me uh, based on their savings. Um, they were very fortunate to get a significant capital grant, but the number of facilities that they have and the way they actually operate it, very minimal operational cost, which was very interesting to me. Um, but there are uh, grants available out there right now. We're looking at a new one right now. Uh, I think it would be dependent uh, financially to be able to get some type of uh, capital investment through a grant program to make it actually financially viable for the city, but we are pursuing that well, right now. I think their net was about 50 grand a year now yes. that they're uh, ahead of the game of what they would have uh, been had they been uh, in normal circumstances. And so anyway, we want to extend our appreciation to Mayor Heiberg and um, their team to be able to give us the opportunity to tour and view that. Uh, it was very interesting. Um, I just wanted to bring in a review of our social media policy and code of conduct. And just really, it's uh, the policies are there for council in terms of how and what we do and how we handle um, our social media and code of conduct and especially contact with the media. And I had a couple of um, interactions from folks, um, sorry, oh, and uh, so really it is about uh, our social media policy really is, uh, outlines the uh, do's and don'ts for us in recommended practices and then our code of conduct policy. And there was the one, and it was in, there was one in relation to the contact with the media that I just was uh, reviewing and I couldn't see in it where there's any formal interaction that says that, and I always assumed this, and it's wrong to assume stuff, but when we have contact with the media that the mayor is directed to be the sole uh, the contact with the media, uh, but it doesn't exist in there. And so I just wanted to bring it forward for council for um, kind of your information and 
uh, discussion and and just as a quick review because um, like I say, I don't know that, and we're all being much more, I think, uh, proactive in terms of how and what we do, or most of us anyway, on social media and how and what we use. Brenda, do you have any? Yes, through your worship, there is uh, no um, direction to council um, not to um, communicate with the media. Um, it's up to council whether they want to appoint the mayor as the sole representative with the media or if you want to just permit each councillor to have their own. I know the media will come to that councillor that's voted against an item and want, um, you know, uh, feedback from them. It's just up to council on how they want to proceed with that. Yeah, it was always, to me, I, I, like I say, I always just assumed that and I have, I have no issues whatsoever with uh, kind of what we do and how we do it today. Uh, it's council that sets that direction. I think the assumption always is if we get contacted by the media that you are a representative of council and at some, at some point are you, uh, is it a being perceived that you're the spokesperson for council? And so you just, I just, like I say, to me, it's just more about that clarification for us in terms of how we as council want to have that interaction occur uh, and how we we should see it uh, should be handled. May, may I comment? Yeah, go ahead, Councillor Parzel. I think it would be good to have it explicitly stated that the mayor is the official spokesperson for council. Um, just coming back from a community where Communication is a big issue. <laughs> I think it's wise to be explicit about things. But just as Brenda said, you know, when the media contacts us, I think it's, again, we've got this written somewhere, that the expectation is that we accurately convey the decisions of council if our efforts to redirect them to the mayor do not prevail, and we do accurately report the decision of council. But if they ask you how did you vote or why did you vote in a certain way, I think we, we have a responsibility to respond to that. But I draw the line there between me initiating a conversation with media um, then and re responding to a question. I don't think it is my duty as a player on the team to initiate a, a contact with media. The mayor can do, does that at his or her pleasure, um, but to respond, I think I have to respond if they ask me. Yeah, for sure. And I think, honestly, the, to me, uh, the, the mayor's role is you speak always on behalf of council. You are the spokesperson for council and to me, whatever the will of council by majority and decisions or directions they make, the mayor always speaks from that perspective. I don't ever, uh, and I don't believe it's my place to speak from my own personal position in terms of how I dealt with a, a item or uh, voted on an item. I speak on behalf of all of council uh, by majority. Councillors don't have that same, in my view, obligation or responsibility. You are individuals elected and can speak from that perspective. But I think that's the difference, I, th I believe anyway, of the expectation of mayor who is the spokesperson on behalf of council. Councillor Earl. Uh, thank you, Your Worship. So, just w so we can we can get some clarification, there is a distinction between speaking on official city business and giving one's opinion, a and I think that's the distinction that needs to be made because I wouldn't, uh, on any of my social media accounts where I might give my opinion, it is specifically indicated that it is not the opinion of the city of Dawson Creek. Um, and I, I get it, there are some people who will, will read what I say and read into it that it maybe represents council, but uh, other than explicitly stating this is indeed my opinion, uh, I'm not sure what I could do above and beyond that. A and to your point, when it is a matter of the will of councils being expressed, I understand that as a team player, um, it, it's my job to support that, um, but there's a lot of things that don't officially fall under council business where we might engage in a discussion with people where we would be, you know, asked for our opinion. 
Yeah, that's, and I guess that's comfortable. That's the difficult part that we all engage in when you put your hand up for this role and serving the public as people don't ever sometimes del delineate or differentiate between our personal and our role as an elected uh, representative. And my position always is going to be that council is the body that provides the policy. And that's all I was just surprised in terms of that we didn't, explicitly have direction in there about how we want as the board to deal with it in terms of as a council for a policy dealing with um, public uh, positions. And, and I'm good with, honestly, if, if what, it's, what we're doing today is working for everybody, but I just feel it's good policy for us to have that direction so we as council all understand how and what our role will be in interacting with it because we are one member of the board. That's a, that was my purpose in bringing it forward because it wasn't there and I was surprised it wasn't there. I always remember it being as part of I thought our orientation or something, but um, it's not in policy. Mayor, do, you, do you want a, a motion then that the policy be amended to have such a sentence? So it probably would be worthwhile if we could direct our administration to bring back uh, some uh, recommendations as it relates to uh, our policy around um, uh, media. I think so I so, I so move. Thank you. Second. Councillor Javeka. Discussion, yeah. Brenda? Through Your Worship, just clarification on which direction. I, I don't want to assume. Yeah. So I think it's the direction in terms of the policy, uh, in terms of how uh, we see the board uh, and members of council interacting and uh, uh, as a spokesperson with media, with the media. I just think that's a healthy discussion for us to have as it relates to a policy that the board feels comfortable with. So the direction is to um, recommend that the mayor be the spokesperson? I, I wouldn't mind just looking at some other uh, some other communities in terms of policies that exist today in terms of how communities and how organizations are dealing with uh, this topic of who's representing uh, their council and the community with their media. Okay. Blair? Your Worship, we can bring that back. There will be different ones. I, and we will check. I'm not sure if the charter doesn't even speak to the issue as the mayor is the chief spokesman. Um, yeah. Possibly not, but it would. It's not the intent of this motion to stymie a councillor from speaking to something. Just we're talking about if there is a council, I, I guess, position that whoever speaks to that position reflects the majority vote of council. Is that uh, we can pursue a number of things. Yeah, I just, uh, I think it's the role and structure of how and how we interact with media in terms of are we being when we're proactively reaching out to the media for media releases or, or statements or representation and or when media connect with us either individually as members of council and or um, how we respond and how we want council to deal with that, right? All right, we'll come back with something. Yeah, thank you. Any further discussion on it? Uh, well, yes, one comment. Uh, I mean, supposing there was a motion passed by council and uh, you were on the minority side uh, and you accurately report out to media what the decision was, surely you would, if they asked you, now, what, what were your reasons for not voting for this, you would have every right to, to, its, to articulate that. For sure I would, but I would always speak uh, from the position of representing the majority of council. I would never, ever, I don't think it's our role to speak against uh, and use that forum, use that venue to argue your point once again. Here, I represent the majority direction of set by this council and I would always do that. But I, if I was asked specifically why I voted against it, I would give that information, but always supporting the will of council. Sure. Thank you. Thank you. Can I comment about Hudson's Hope? Yes. I'm so I'm really glad you and Blair went um, to see it. Uh, just a re reminder to uh, all council that, uh, it will, and it maybe Blair may want to follow up on this, but um, it's my understanding that Peace Energy is uh, has agreed to keep a, um, a watching eye on available grants. 
for projects like that on behalf of the city. Yeah, I think it's a, I think it's a really good do topic for us to bring back this fall as part of our budget discussions, deliberations, in terms of looking at potentially opportunities uh, for it, and is it something that we want to pursue and maybe uh, begin to put some seed money into exactly that, build a business case, and see if there's some money out there for us? Brenda? Uh, through your worship, we have not yet voted on that motion. Yeah. Okay. Um, any further discussion? All those in favor? Opposed? It's carried. Thank you. Uh, item 10.3, we had a delegation request from Urban Systems regarding the presentation of the Rotary Lake, uh, Rotary Park, sorry, redevelopment engagement. And um, Blair, do you want to give us a kind of a polls okay. on what we uh, need to be moving forward with now? All right. So, Your Worship, they did supply as well a high-level Class D estimate, I believe it was a Class D, uh, that came with it, which is somewhere in the range of give or take 40%, so very high level because things are not priced out. You will see in the upcoming budget discussions that we will see the first uh, thing that has to be done is the reclamation of the old lake. We will discuss that. I think what we would like to do, though, is set up part of our discussions uh, when we come together for budget. Uh, to have council engage in, is there a wish to proceed uh, with what they have brought forward with the concept plan for that area? Would they like to do it? Would you like to do it in that area? Would you like to look at splitting up their concepts into other park areas in the city of Dawson Creek? But it, the first thing we will do next year and the capital expenditure request we will bring is to reclaim the lake, to pull out the asphalt, to backfill it in, level it off, and get it back to a natural state. But I think it will take a relatively healthy conversation of yourselves and council uh, to make a determination on which direction you would like to proceed uh, with either the redevelopment of that park in its entirety, as was presented, or if you want to entertain other options available. Thank you. Councillor Dover. Uh, thank you. Uh, just curious on, uh, like I like what you just said, that there's a bigger picture to this, but. What was the cost for them to do that presentation? Like for them to uh, do, do the that work proposal and that work? I believe it was council approved thirty thousand dollars in the budget. So, so we got a presentation from them on uh, like what we what their ideas were for the park, but not knowing what we. So they actually it was asked of them to go do uh, um, a development of a plan for the Rotary Park. Um, of which they did. They brought conceptual plans for part of that request was you had to engage with the community, the user groups, bring people together. All of that has culminated in what was presented here. So so all of that community engagement work that they did with engaging with uh, the various uh, groups anything? over the summer, that was part of the overall process. So, uh, uh, Councillor Earl. Uh, thank you, Your Worship. So I, I was a uh, very interesting presentation. I'm glad they provided it to us in stages. Um, and to their point is, uh, you know, my, my trepidation for this undertaking, and I think I've expressed it once or twice, is the, uh, the idea of mission creep, which is, um, you know, you set out with a specific goal in mind. In this case, it's to replace a free outdoor water amenity for families during the summer. And then um, the, you, you open the doors up and, and ask people for their wish lists and, and things start to kind of get incorporated into it and piled on and on. And then what was intended to be a specific solution to a specific problem becomes an instance where you're trying to solve all problems for everyone. Um, so. I, I appreciate the stages of it because it does give us the opportunity to break that out. And once we understand the costs associated, figure out what needs to go in there and, and what can maybe be either go somewhere else because it would fit better or, or what is uh, maybe more of a want than a need. And, and given our, our priority for uh, core infrastructure at the moment, what, uh, what we can do without. Thank you. So um, may I comment? Yeah, go ahead, Councillor Parswell. Um, I appreciate very much what Councillor Earl has just stated. Um, 
You know, a vision without resources is very frustrating for everybody. Um, yeah, I, uh, I think uh, it's wise to, obviously we have to deal with Rotary Lake, but I would hesitate about anything else at this time and until we have a clear picture of uh, budget implications. The other thing that concerns me is um, ongoing costs. I mean, we the city is, has an agreement with uh, the Mars Zero Part Society. And um, if we do proceed with some of these phases at that location, um, we need to be cognizant of the the increased maybe operating costs and uh, who's going to fund all those things. Uh, the Mars Zero Part Society is, uh, as you may know, we, we've cut their funding and um, we, we need to be careful about what we put there without a discussion of operating, insurance, and replacement. All right. Thank you. Councillor Dober? Thank you. So just so I'm a little clear, I'm just, uh, like I understand what Councillor Parslow is saying. So we're unsure what we want to do there, but we spent $30,000 to, and approved it, to get a plan done up, but we don't even know, like, yeah. if that's a plan. And then previous to that, was there a plan done up, like, which areas of Dawson? Like, because I know we got the old pool area downtown. Like, there's other areas, like... I'm just not sure why we spent money to get that done. Like, I get we have to do something with Rotary Lake, but if there's other areas, whether it's Kin Park or the old pool area or one of the other parks, like, what would, would best situate, like, a, you know, because I think something like this is huge for our community and is needed, but, like, shouldn't we figure out where we, that should be put this, first? Yeah, there, well, this was the first stage in terms of saying, okay, Rotary Lake is not going to be reopened. We need to now start to plan uh, what we're going to do with that area down there, with the lake and with the old area. So okay. this was the first step in that process and engaging the community and saying, what is it that we should do? Where should we do it? How should we do it? What should be incorporated? And this was the first step in that. So now council has to provide that direction and say, okay, is it there? Location, location, location. What is it? How are we going to provide that uh, mechanism for capital in terms of what we're going to build there, and then to Councillor Parslow's, then you got operating, and so I think this is just the first stage in redeveloping a plan for the community for a new park, and is it there or is it not? And this was just the first step in that. So shouldn't it be a bigger overview of a like instead of like I don't know maybe a small percentage of that thirty thousand was used for that presentation for Rotary Lake, but it's like, you know, meeting with the community and, you know, the stakeholders, I, I think is important to figure out what we want. I, I think there's a lot of good information on there, what our community wants and needs, but I, I don't know, like, should there be a bigger picture of like, okay, this is what our community would like this is where we should put it and then put some money up well, for Well, so now that's what council's job is going to be in our budget deliberations in terms of saying, is that what we want to do? Is that where we want to do it? And well, how do we want to move it forward? Okay. So having this is the first step in that process for council to now to start to say, if we're going to allocate some capital, is that what we want to do? And is that how we want to move it forward? Right? Okay. Blair? Your Worship, you, you can, and we've had some discussion, um, both Shantae and myself and others, about a comprehensive plan, parks management plan, or before the entire city. That may very well come into the discussion that Councillor Dover's talking about amongst ourselves. I think you have to set the stage, though, as the elected mayor and council of the city to say, here's our direction moving forward. Here's what we've learned so far about the Rotary Park redevelopment. Should we move ahead? Here's what it could mean. Would it be better after this discussion amongst ourselves here to say, I really like option one. Maybe we could take pieces of that to Kin Park or to, I mean, different areas. But that discussion, this uh, this was put forward, um, as I said, as a budgeted item uh, from Mayor and Council to look at the redevelopment once that lake uh, was closed. This is the information they've brought forward to Council for consideration. It does come with a hefty 
price. It is in the many, many, many millions of dollars to develop that conceptual plan. And we will have that discussion at budget time, but again, it's a Class D estimate. It is the best they could put forward based on the ask of our city to them. Okay. So. Councilor Chabacroft. So I'll make a motion that we proceed with phase one. Obviously, we have to clean up the site, so I'll make that motion so we get started on it. Okay. Um, Your Worship, that will come, whether, and I will look to your guidance, that will come in the budget requests we're bringing forward under capital. Um, this would just solidify that that would be one decision already made, is how I would see that. Thank you. Do you have a seconder for the motion? I will second it. Councillor Parswell, discussion? Councillor Dober? Or sorry, Councillor Dvekoff, did you want to speak to the motion? Well, other than, you know, we have to do something with Rotary Lake, so phase one is talks about basically reclaiming it and cleaning up the site and that, so I think we got to proceed with that. Thank you. Councillor Dober? Uh, my suggestions are, like, I don't know the detail of that phase one because I didn't know there would be a motion on it. I think we should hold off until our budget review and, and look at everything as a whole because, you know, what's two weeks going to mean right now to, yeah. to make that decision without knowing. I don't know if the phase one was just taking that out or if there was other parts of it. So was the phase one... There were other parts. Because yeah. the phase one might have had some other, like, things being done to go to phase two and three, yeah. so... Through worship, yes, phase one was the re reclaiming, and also it was um, the fence. Also, what they suggested was the fence on um, the John Hart Highway, and then also bike racks as well. And what we had put in our capital is basically re retaking the the pool base and refixing that out of there. We didn't take the whole thing out of there, but we definitely have room for movement in that in that capital request that we put forward already. Yeah. Okay. Because I think we should. You know, obviously, do what we have to do there, but I don't think we should be doing any more until we know what our direction is. Thank you. Any further discussion? Yes, if I I could speak, I, I second it because uh, I thought we should discuss it uh, for staff's sake. Um, so I'm I'm I uh, believe that. Uh, the only thing I would support is the dealing with the actual lake, not the fencing or the by tracks. Um, that's the only urgent thing that needs to be done. So I'm going to make a, an amendment, if I may, to a motion I seconded. I, I'm looking to you, ma'am. I'm on a shaky yep. ground here. I've been am I being procedurally correct or just procedurally cute? Yeah, no, you're procedurally <laughs> okay. Okay, so I'd like to amend the motion by phase one, just after the, the statement phase one, um, uh, Rotary Lake fixture only. Okay. Thank you. So if the, the, the amendment is that as we're going to proceed with phase one, which at this point restricts it only to the uh, lake itself, not the other components. That's my intent, yes. Thank you. Do I have a seconder? Councillor Dober, discussion on the amendment? Ready for the question? All in favour? Opposed? Carried. And on the motion itself? Ready for the question? All in favour? Opposed, carried. Blair, do you need anything else for that at this point? No, that's fine, Your Worship. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. And so that deals with Mayor's business. Chief CAO operational update. Uh, yeah. Nothing new to report at this meeting, Your Worship. Thank you. Diary, consent calendar. Can I have a motion to approve consent calendar? Move. Councillor uh, Kemp, second. Councillor Dober. All those in favor? Opposed? Carried. Thank you. And there's anything in there that you want to lift? Strategic priority, Blair? Oh, sorry. nothing from okay, me. Sorry, I, your light was on. Uh, um, strategic priorities? Nothing at this point. Okay. Media, uh, so we'll have a motion to recess to close. Uh, agenda item 2-1, section 90 is the acquisition, disposition, appropriation, expropriation of land or improvements. And item 4-2 is our section 90 is the minutes. Move to recess to close. Councillor Dober, second Councillor Kemp. All in favour? 
Opposed? Carried. So we'll have five minutes to get uh, our folks uh, remove their equipment and we'll into closed and Brenda? Sorry. Oh, I thought you had your hand up. <laughs>